All right. So since we've covered most of the basics of Grasshopper, I would now like to show you a few methods for documenting and structuring your code so that you don't get lost in your own code after not looking at it for half an hour and also making sure that you can use it in the future but also that other people can understand and use your code. Um, essentially there's three things that are important here. One is to use groups so that the logical steps of your program, so when you think about what you're going to program you might think, in, okay, I'm going to define my surface, and then I'm going to divide it, and then I'm going to do the right? So each of these logical kind of steps that you've sort of doing, put them in groups. Now, the next step is making sure that your groups have clearly defined inputs and outputs. And then finally, labeling um, all your groups and your inputs and your outputs, and maybe adding descriptions or explanations of why or how something works. All right, so let's start with uh, creating groups and generally tidying up your code. Um, try to drag your components so that you don't have too many crossing lines or uh, objects lying above each other or uh, weird connections like this so that it's easier to, let's say, read your code. Um, so. One thing that can help you there is if you select multiple objects, you get these little icons and they let you align things left, right, center, and they also let you um, distribute the space evenly between them. And you'll notice that if you drag things, they sometimes um, snap so that you get straight lines. Well, that's just an aside. Um, what we want to do here is create a group for one of the steps in our program. Generally what this program, you can see I create a little bit of spaghetti code here, is um, it creates a line, creates an array of this, um, does a subdivision and then joins multiples of these subdivisions in a semi-random manner and then we create in the end we create window frames and windows. So the first step is that we create this line at the bottom and so these things belong together, select them, spacebar, and then you can group. Now once you have a group, you can, um, there's several options available to you. You can right click and you can see that you've got different outlines of the groups. So you've got the box, the blob, and the rounded rectangle outline. And you can also cycle through these by double clicking the group. Another thing you can do is if you right click you can go to the color and select different colors. I like to use colors to indicate what type of group this is. So I would separate into one color, let's say red, for um, user inputs or parameters. And uh, maybe have green for, for previews or uh, whatever makes you, whatever you think makes it easier to understand your code. So you can either do it by function, so let's say um, parameters and outputs and just general code, or you could have things like you've got one thing for all your, your framing and one for all your, your building envelope or one thing for your stories or whatever works for you. Um, I actually like to use these rounded rectangle groups. Um, because then by dragging certain items slightly out from the group, it's, you can visually distinguish them and make it easier to identify what the inputs and outputs and what the parameters are. All right, so that's groups. Um, if you want to add or remove something to, from a group, you simply select that object and then right click into the group. So we can now remove this from the group and add it back into the group. So that's groups. The next thing I said was inputs and outputs. And for that, I'm going to go over to a slightly more complex bit of the code. What's happening here? Well, this is the surface divided into its subsurfaces. And what comes out the other end is a bunch of surfaces that together create the, the, the frames and the windows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this group that on the one side takes as an input 
these subsurfaces and spits out these two logical units, namely the frames and the windows. So let's select all of this and go group. And we can drag this out easily. Oh dear, maybe drag it down because there's still this bit up here. Okay, so this is our group that's supposed to take care of going from subsurfaces to frames and windows. So let's create some outputs. Now if you need to group certain things together or simply want to given, give something a name, you can always use these um, parameter items these containers. So I'm going to use a geometry container and I'm going to plug in all the geometry that constitutes that uh, constitutes the window frame. So I think it's uh, this and the boundary surface and the second loft and then uh, what is it? There's another boundary surface somewhere. Is it this one? No. Um, Loft, loft, boundary. Here it is. There we go. And I'm going to add this to the group. And now you can see if we go to our custom preview. Oh dear, the swatch is still part of that group. So let's remove that from the group. Remove from group. Hello. I would like to remove you from the group. There we go. Um, so now, instead of having these four lines being dragged from the middle of this spaghetti group to this input, we can use a single connection and our code immediately becomes easier to understand um, and prettier to look at. Now there's one more thing we need to do, namely label these uh, this output. And you can do that by going right click and then let's call this window frames. Right? And we could do the same for the windows. So add a geometry box item and call it window pane panes, add it to the group. And then this is the geometry. And now you can already see it's much easier when you look at this group to understand, okay, what does it output? Because the only thing that's connected on the output side are these two things. And you can say, oh, OK, so it outputs window frames and window panes. And you can easily work with this. Let's put these things into a group for our preview. Give it a different color, something greenish. And here you can see that you can kind of make things look nice and neat using these rounded boxes and maybe is then more apparent, okay, what's happening here, right? This is for the top, this is for the bottom, this is an input kind of thing. Um, we should um, not only do outputs, but we should also do inputs. So the same principle applies here. If we use a single input and then all the multiple uses of this one geometry within the group, there are only connections within that actual group, which means when you drag this around, it's a lot clearer, okay, what does this group need? What does it output? And everything just becomes more tidier, uh, a lot tidier and easier to understand. Now, the last thing you need to do is um, put all your user inputs or parameters in a sensible spot. Now this might be at the edge, at the kind of the bottom, or but as long as they're slightly separated from the rest of your spaghetti here, um, it's easy to find them. And you can also put them in separate groups or um, um, you give them big label or something. The important thing is that you don't have inputs which read value, right? So always give it something meaningful. So uh, what's this? Uh, I th yes, this should be the this is the width of the window frames. So, and I know this because I only programmed it, you know, half an hour ago. But um, try asking me in two weeks' time, and it would take me a little bit longer to answer that question. What on earth that parameter does? Width of frames. There we go. So that's the one input, and we actually use it twice up here and here. 
So redundant information is bad. Okay, and the other thing is the 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 it's kind of, uh, the the depth of these element elements. So let's go depth of frames. All right, and if we go back to this, you could then have a lot of fun of kind of making this nice and tidy. Uh, maybe bringing things closer together so that you get a cohesive chunk of code. All right, so then everything becomes visually you can you can make it easier to understand the code in a visual manner. All right. So let's put this up here. There we go. And just tidy things up in general and um, that way it becomes easier to understand. Now, we I've showed you how to label the inputs and outputs or the individual objects here. So this should be uh, facade subsurfaces, for example. When it comes to um, labeling the entire group, you can also go right-click and then type in a name here. And then you get this little floating name tag. But as soon as you zoom out just a little bit, it's becomes totally ineleg illegible. Um, so what I suggest doing is using scribbles. If you double click and create yourself a scribble, you can add nice big chunky text baseline of facade. And you can change the font size and uh, the font being used here as well. And then you just add that to the group and you get a nicely labeled easy to read even from a distance group. So nobody has to know what's going on inside this group uh, in detail, but you can just read the title. Oh, okay, that's what's happening here. Easy to understand. Now, if there's complicated things afoot within your group, it might be sensible to add further scribbles. And by the way, the short code is the tilde. And then you can just type away. So we could do something like... Um, offset of the so or maybe something like um, inner so this is the inner objects and then we have another label for the outer and maybe you could make this in a slightly smaller font so it doesn't pop as much there we go And you can uh, use scribbles to also place really long texts in your code. Um, another way to indicate um, what's important or if you want to um, kind of put like a concept sketch, I guess, into things, you can also use these um, sketch objects. Now, it probably will be of medium use to you if you use a mouse like me. But if you've already got a tablet hooked up to your computer, this might be a nice way of creating annotations as well. All right, so that's the three important steps in getting legible and easy to understand code is create groups of um, functionally, functional units that belong together. Give them distinct inputs and outputs and then label everything. Label your inputs, label your outputs, label your groups and if need be add further information for what is happening inside the group, explain things. Maybe you looked up an algorithm on the internet and you can post the link to that in a little scribble somewhere so that you can then find it later on again. All right, one last thing I would like to show you, namely in a slightly bigger project. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, once you get larger chunks of code with lots of groups, your connections will go, go all over the place. And there it's, for one, once they pass through various groups, it's usually a good idea to set the display to faint or even to hidden so that it um, doesn't, um, otherwise it becomes confusing because you get too many lines going all over and it's harder to see, okay, what is this connected to? What is this connected to? And if the groups get really far apart, um, 
instead of zooming in, trying to figure out, okay, where did this go? You can use these jump spots, right? So you can drag these to the various positions that you're using this information in. Um, they're up here in the utility, by the way, jump. And then if you're zoomed in and you're like, oh, okay, I want to see where this is being used, you double click it and it'll then take you to the other jump point. All right. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope your code remains clean. <laughs>